Even the blind man could see that's not so. Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. This video is going to be a little bit different than the norm. This is something that I do on my off time. I love looking at pictures of Mars, and specifically the images that are uploaded from the Curiosity and Opportunity rovers. The NASA JPL site allows us to look at all the images that are uploaded on a sole basis, which I think a sole is a day on Mars. So I've been through Soul 1 through Soul about 500, and I found these images that I wanted to share with you guys today. This video might be a little bit longer than others, but for anyone who does watch, I'm going to put in the comments section all of the links to the pictures that we are going to discuss so that you guys can go to the NASA JPL site and look them up yourself and then you can have the original images. And I'm going to pin that comment to the top so you guys have access to those links. I don't think YouTube likes it if I put those comments in the description box for whatever reason they seem to disappear. So this is the first image that I want to bring to light. I found this image pretty interesting because it has a few different things in it. This is a photo editing software program that I found online. It was free to download, free to use, and it doesn't put watermarks if you want to try to alter your uh, images, but it's pretty difficult to understand and use. I'm still learning and I haven't even figured out the color alterations yet. Although I do know that you can whitewash these pictures with the red and then put them in regular colors that you would see. So the reason I'm using this software program, even though I don't know how to use it, is because I do know how to use the zoom and I can zoom in closer using this program than I can with the standard photo viewing tools on the computer. So I do like that aspect of it and I have figured out that part. Okay guys, so the first thing that I want to point out is this little critter over here to the right hand side. And I'm just going to circle him for us. You can see my artistic abilities suck. But nobody can draw a perfect circle, remember that. Another thing I want you to notice in this picture is this and then these. So do you guys think you have an idea of what this critter over here on the right hand side might be? In my mind, I thought of a beetle. In this case, it might be a pretty large beetle. It might not be either. I'm not 100% sure on how far this picture was actually taken. And I can zoom out for you guys so that you can see how much we actually zoomed in here. Only about 150% according to the picture. And I think it can go up to 4,000 or something. But this little critter over here might be a beetle it could be some sort of rat but I'm assuming a bug because the ass end of it it definitely looks like a beetle is sectioned off and then you have the forefront the torso or whatever they call those on the exoskeletons okay so we're gonna zoom in on this critter here and that's about as close as we can get without really distorting the image what I find really interesting about this picture is that underneath the torso area, the front torso area, is a shadow as if this torso is hovering above the ground. And if we back out, the image gets a, a little bit clearer. It's not so pixelated. But you can see where the torso does appear to be hovering above the ground. And the thorax is where the legs are protruding from here on the outer edge. The little part here in the front looks like its head, and it looks like there might be even two little ears coming up off the side. Maybe it is a beetle, or maybe it is simply just a rock. I don't know. You decide. But what I found really most interesting about this image were the two pieces of wood, possibly three pieces of petrified wood down here um, towards the bottom of the image. Alright, so I blew up the image as much as possible, and my hopes is that somebody will see this and go, Hey, you know what? I want to see what this really is too, so let me grab these pictures and doctor them up so that we can see what these objects really are. But I want to point these two things out here because to me these 
too, really look like pieces of wood, or at least petrified wood. This image that's further back, if you notice, it kind of has a long angle protruding. It even looks like it comes to a point, but that's neither here nor there. It almost looks like it's wrapped around here. Might have been a, a limb or something coming from this area here. And this might have been the base where it was attached. And you can almost see where it was stripped from the main branch. So this could have been a pretty large uh, piece of wood or tree. So if we see the, the rip or the tear or possible cut here, it looks as if the angle of this branch would have been at about, you know, 45 degrees from the base, which is absolutely fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I then started thinking, well, what if this 45 degree angle was actually the tree trunk itself, and this is the root system? And how this longer piece kind of protrudes and is, is a little twisted here makes me think of some of the root systems that I've seen here in Florida. So it is very possible that that's what we're looking at here is an ancient piece of tree system or a root or even a branch. The one that is just undeniable for me is the one that's below it. If you see this rock, <laughs> probably by now, it's what I would think is a petrified tree trunk or the bark on the outside. The bark on a pine tree can like almost rip like a paper. And that's kind of what this style has. But if we look closely at this piece of bark or whatever it might be, we can see how it has lines going straight down. And also the center appears to be hollowed. So maybe the inner core of the tree started to rot. It could be that the inner core was eaten out. But it does show us that this object was in a circle. So that is also indicative of the tree rings that you would find on an aging tree. So again, if going back, if you ever cut down a pine tree or some other tree, you'll see there is layers of circles, and it just looks like this outer layer of circle was the bark that hardened and probably petrified over time. So if you went and picked this up, it would probably be a really heavy piece of petrified rock, but it's very possible that this was, in fact, tree bark or the outside of a tree trunk at one time. This next image is very special because of what I found in it. It made me so excited to see it too. So I hope you guys see the same thing I did. But let me be honest with you first. The whole reason why I even pulled this image up was because if you look to the center top of the screen, you're going to see like a dot here. I thought um, this was an UFO on Mars, but I think it's either just something on the camera, uh, the camera lens itself, or it is something that's actually in that horizon back there. Of course, we can't really see very well because of the distortion that I think NASA adds to their images. Nonetheless, I'm very happy I pulled it up because I was able to find this critter. Bear with me while I zoom in here. You guys might already be able to see him. So I want you to direct your attention to right here. What I see in this image is a four-legged critter with a somewhat longer of a neck. I'm not too sure if this little critter has found something in front of him or if this something is maybe its baby or whatever. With this image here, I used a few of the tools that I could manage to use to kind of blow this up for us and create the smoothest image possible. So I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm not too sure if you can see this very well. I know I can't because it's pretty pixelated. But we can see this critter appears to be extending his neck and maybe looking back at this critter here. And we can clearly see that there is enough pixelation to identify a blockhead a block neck that is just slightly smaller, the four legs, and 
When we get this close to the image, we can even see the shadow that it casts on the ground and how that shadow is catching the reflection of the image's head and neck. So I don't know, you guys tell me what you think on this one, but I would definitely say that there is at least two live critters on Mars. All right, guys, so here's the next picture. And sometimes I don't even remember, oh, I see. Yeah, I was about to say, sometimes I don't even remember what it is that I saw in the picture, and I really have to go back and look for it, but I see exactly what it is I saw. So if we look under here, we can kind of see where this would be a nice shaded area because Mars is, um, well, my understanding anyways, Mars is a pretty hot planet during the day because it lacks ozone. It might not necessarily be hot to the touch, but it's definitely radiation hot, which if you live on Mars, I guess that's something that you've had to adapt to. With that being said, though, I would assume that you're going to be looking for shaded areas. Considering that this rock looks like a really nice shaded area to escape to, we could assume that this rock that looks like a bug may very actually well be a bug. So I went ahead and circled that there for you so that you could see it, and I'm going to remove that. And then we're going to go ahead and zoom in. I don't want to be on Mars if this is what they have there. You know what they did? I know what they did. They're in Iraq. And they took a picture of a camel spider. That's what that thing is, is a camel spider. Look at it. Those things are huge. This thing is, oh my gosh, this thing is huge. Okay, I would not want that around me. Hey, bejeebus. All right, so if we look at this nasty little critter here, we'll see that it's got a big round thorax that actually blends very well with these rocks. And I would say that that's a really good survival technique. We can see that the direction that he would be running to uh, would be under that rock. So it's pretty safe to say that, you know, what we're looking at here is a legitimate creature. But if we look at the side of the thorax, we can see these little legs coming off of the side of this creature. And there are six of them. So... Unless there's two front legs that we're not seeing, more than likely this wouldn't be classified as an arachnid, but more of an insect. When I look at it, I think of a tarantula. It also kind of looks like a um, very oversized termite. But this one, like I said, it does seem to blend in with its surroundings. At least its thorax does. Alright guys, this is going to be the last image I share with you until the next video. I'm definitely going to make another one of these because I enjoy doing it. And I enjoy going through the Mars pictures anyway, so sharing it with you guys is just an added bonus. This picture is definitely not as exciting as finding critters, but it is one of the earlier pictures I found. When I first started looking, I was only looking for remnants of life in the past. I wasn't looking for active life. I just wanted to see if, you know, what I believe is true. So that's, you know, what I went into this looking for. I, I wasn't looking for life now. I didn't expect to find it. Maybe there's something they aren't telling us. Maybe they didn't even really go to Mars and that's why we're actually able to find these critters and all these different things because these pictures are, you know, taken in Iraq and that's how we were able to get this big camel spider, or, you know, in Africa with the deserts. What we're looking at here is we can see this longer stick. It could be a limb of a tree. It just looks like it's severely angled. It could also be maybe a partial wall that's buried underneath the sand and all you're seeing is the top portion or it could just be a rock. All I know is that it didn't look like the other rocks around it or the other rocks that I've seen on Mars and it was one of the earlier pictures so this was definitely surprising in an archaeological way of speaking and that's probably why I went ahead and downloaded it. So guys let me know what you think of these images in the comments section. If you know of any tips that could help me figure out this program, <laughs> I would be more than happy to take that advice. I really do need to figure this program out because I think that there's a lot of cool stuff you could actually do with it. It seems pretty intricate. And from what I've seen in other people's images that they've doctored with it, it definitely seems like it would bring life to Mars that we're not actually able to see in the photos they upload. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments section. Of course, I'd love 
talking with you guys. I love my YouTube community. I love hearing what you guys have to say on stuff. You know, you can agree or disagree with me. It's all in theory. If you think of something better, I'm definitely going to present your idea. I'm not scared to admit when I'm wrong. I don't like to be wrong, but I'm not scared to admit when I'm wrong. So if you guys have a better idea than what I came up with for these objects, please let me know because I'm definitely interested in your theories as well. Unfortunately, there's just no way to know for sure because none of us are in Iraq or Africa right now. I mean Mars. Totally meant Mars. Till next time, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.